Coming up tonight on News Channel 21 at 6, after a severe winter, we check water levels in Central Oregon's reservoirs as snow continues to melt. Today's Powerball jackpot is the 10th highest it's ever been, and I even got a ticket. I'll have tips for you on what to do before and after you take home the loot. And a Redmond man is behind bars tonight after police say a shot he fired bounced off of a neighbor's head. Your news starts right now. Now, from Central Oregon's News Leader, this is News Channel 21 at 6. Good evening, I'm Alex Biston. And I'm Lee Anderson. A Redmond man's behind bars tonight after he fired off a gun inside his home. That bullet leaving one house, entering another, and then bouncing off of a neighbor's head. Yeah, Redmond police were called Monday night to the 2400 block of Southwest Wikiup Court. The caller told police a bullet had come into the home and bounced off a head of a resident who was watching TV. Police say 24 year old Ryan Pine, who lived south of the victim's house, fired a nine millimeter gun. There were two people inside the victim residence. Uh, the bullet only bounced off the head of one of them. The unidentified victim was not injured. Pine faces several charges, including third degree assault and five counts of recklessly endangering another person. A Prineville man who allegedly met a teen on Tumblr and had sex with the victim made his first court appearance in Deschutes County this afternoon. Police arrested 43 year old Christopher Stout from Prineville yesterday after they say he had an encounter with a 15 year old teen at the Doubletree Hotel in Bend. They say he attempted to contact the victim dozens of times after that. According to his Facebook page, Stout worked for the U.S. Forest Service. His bail was set at $1 million. Stout's expected to be back in court on March 1st. A man convicted of sexually abusing a female Oregon State University student when she was still a minor has been sentenced to five months in jail. 23 year old Isaac Granberry pl pled guilty to two counts of sexual abuse in a plea deal with prosecutors. Granberry and the victim were in a relationship while she was attending OSU in 2014. A juvenile court judge has decided to keep two year old River Shoemaker in protective custody and ordered his mother into drug treatment. Shoemaker is the toddler who wandered out of his Portland home Saturday and was found alive in a tangle of blackberry bushes a block away. The boy's mother, 27 year old Holly and Markson, cried in court as she agreed to go into a drug treatment facility. The judge allowed Rivers parents to visit for the first time today, whom he hadn't seen since his disappearance over the weekend. Governor Kate Brown joined a variety of different groups yesterday to speak about gun safety. The politician spoke about Senate Bill 797, proposed legislation aimed at protecting Oregonians from gun violence. The bill consists of four separate gun safety policies, including closing the so-called boyfriend loophole, which would ban abusive dating partners from having guns. However, not all agree more legislation is needed for gun background checks. I've been, I've been a law-abiding citizen all of my life. I buy my guns the way I'm supposed to buy them. I fill out all the paperwork. Uh, but it gets pretty hard sometimes to stay that law-abiding citizen when every time you turn around, somebody's trying to tell you, well, so-and-so did this, so you're going to suffer. Senate Bill 797 was just introduced last Tuesday. It has yet to be approved by the Senate or the House. Well, a reward has been raised to $5,000. It could be yours for the information about the theft of thousands of rounds of rifle and pistol ammunition from Crater Lake National Park. The ammunition was stolen two weeks ago from a locked building in the park. Authorities have also released a security video of a pickup truck entering the park at 2.30 a.m. The stockpile of ammunition is for the law enforcement program at the park. If you have any information about the theft, contact the National Park Service. Their contact information is available on the online version of this story. We're colder today across the high desert than we were yesterday, and a fairly chilly weekend is ahead. Yeah, that's right. Emily Kirk says we're still not done with the snow showers either. She joins us live outside with the latest. Emily. 
Well, Alex and Lee, that's right. We do still have a few remaining snow showers across the high desert tonight, more specifically across the Cascades. Let's take a look at the satellite and radar right now. Other than that, it is overcast to mostly cloudy skies tonight. We do have a chance for a few remaining snow showers over about the next 24 hours before our chance pretty much windles down to uh, nothing. Taking a look at our current temperatures right now down towards the south and La Pines in the upper 20s, lower 30s once you get into the Bend area. It's in the mid 30s near Madras. Warm Springs still hanging on to the lower 40s. So for your evening planner, we are looking at cool temperatures settling in. It's in the upper 20s by 7 o'clock, 26 degrees by 11 o'clock this evening. So we're getting back to average for overnight lows and in fact falling below average for both overnight lows and daytime highs moving forward. I have a look ahead at your extended forecast coming up in just a couple minutes. For now, we'll send it back inside to you. Irrigation season is a little over a month away and the crazy winter weather is throwing a few curveballs. We talked to Jeremy Giffen, the Deschutes County Basin Water Master, about where we stand and what to expect. AJ Cotto has that story. After all the snow and rain, water levels of some central Oregon reservoirs might surprise people. The three Deschutes Upper Basin Reservoirs are at or below uh, average for this time of year, so we will not be filling Crane Prairie, Crescent Lake or Wiki up this year. These three reservoirs currently range between 65 and 77 percent full. Several years of drought left Wiki Up's levels very low going into winter. But even though the Deschutes Basin reservoirs are not expected to fill, water should still be plentiful. It's kind of a, a mixed bag there because we will have below average reservoir levels to start the irrigation season. However, the natural flow of the Deschutes River from tributaries such as the Little Deschutes River will be very high because of the robust snowpack. So I think all in all, we're probably looking for above average irrigation season. On the other end of the spectrum, the Prineville Reservoir is expected to fill, and you might notice changes at the Bowman Dam. Uh, we have increased the outflows in response to uh, the inflows being uh, fairly high right now. But as the inflow drops off, we will uh, be dropping off the outflow to match that. Prineville's reservoir is now 65% full. And if you want to check out current reservoir levels around Central Oregon, head to the online version of this story at KTVZ.com. I'll include a link with up-to-date information. In Prineville, AJ Cotto, News Channel 21. Still to come tonight's Powerball is one of the largest in the history of the jackpot. Reporter Mike Allen talks with some Central Oregonians hoping to win big. Plus, torrential rain has led to some major flooding in Northern California. We'll take a look after the break. And coming up tonight at 6.30, the deadline for Dakota Pipeline protesters has come and gone, but many are now facing arrest. You're watching News Channel 21 at 6. We'll be right back. If somebody wins today's Powerball jackpot, they'd take home the 10th largest prize ever given out. Mike Allen joins us live now at a popular destination for optimistic investors. Mike. Lee, Alex, good evening. I'm at Quickway on the corner of Butler Market in Boyd Acres, which sold a million dollar lottery ticket in 2014. And they've seen people come in and out all day to try to get lucky. The Powerball starts at $40 million and goes up from there, but it's one of the biggest ever today. It currently stands at $403 million. After you buy the lucky ticket, you want to make sure only you can claim the prize. So the first thing you're going to want to do when you buy one is sign it. If you don't and you lose it, there won't be any recourse for you to claim your prize if you win. If the, the silly criminal decides he wants to try to claim that prize, he's going to have to alter the ticket. And we've got all sorts of smart people here at the lottery that will recognize that. And then there'll be some, there'll be some questions asked. I was told the best thing you can do if you end up winning all that money is get a financial advisor. I might not need to tell you that, though, because Oregon has a good track record with handling lottery winnings. Here in Oregon, we have been really fortunate with our jackpot winners. You know, they've been pretty wise about how to, you know, they've done that thing, gone out and got a financial plan. If you do win today and you want your money up front, your lump sum total after taxes would be about $163 million. And if you choose the 30-year annuity, you'd get $270 million. Don't get your hopes up too high, though. The odds of winning this prize are about 1 in $292 million. You have a better chance of dying by vending machine and conceiving quadruplets. But interestingly, your odds are actually better for winning this lottery than they are for filling out a perfect NCAA bracket. The most generous odds given for that are 1 in 128 billion. Live and hopefully lucky in Bend, Mike Allen, News Channel 21. 
Staff from the Humane Society of Central Oregon made their way to Puerto Rico this week to help with the Sister Shelter Project. The project was created to pair the overwhelmed shelters in Puerto Rico with shelters that are thriving in the U.S. There are a staggering 300,000 street dogs in Puerto Rico that need help. We spoke with community outreach manager Lynn Ochita who told us more about Central Oregon's role in relieving the overcrowded shelters there in Puerto Rico. So we are trying to help reduce those rates, help reduce the stress on the shelters um, by sending down our staff members to assist and help them with ideas and protocols. The Central Oregon staff are in San Juan. They're just one of 11 humane societies across the U.S. that are assisting with the overcrowding in Puerto Rico. Still to come, Oregon's economic forecast is out and things are looking up, but how long is the growth expected to last? We've got that story ahead. Plus, we are seeing cooler conditions across the high desert over the next couple of days and a few remaining snow showers. I'll let you know we can expect those coming up right after the break. Waters continue to rise in San Jose, California. At least 14,000 residents have been evacuated from their homes as the water levels rose. The waters have forced the closure of a major highway, submerged cars and flooded homes. San Jose City officials have been forced to expand mandatory evacuations. Authorities had to go door to door warning residents after the reservoirs overflowed, sending chest deep waters into neighborhoods. More than 400 people have been evacuated by water, by boat, uh, in the last day and a half. Uh, fair to say we've got fire crews that have been working multiple overtimes uh, and they've done an incredibly heroic job to ensure that we've gotten everybody out safely. The rain has stopped for now, but flood warnings are expected to stay intact through Saturday morning. Yikes, yeah. dangerous conditions sure. out in San Jose. Horrible. Yeah, incredible footage coming out of there too. It's a lot of water they've seen over the past couple of days. Yeah, a absolutely. Lot of rain. Lots yeah. of water. Are we expecting any rain? Well, you know, we're all part of the same system that they were seeing. Obviously, we didn't get as much in terms of our rainfall totals, uh, but we are still seeing snow across the Cascades. And you know who was totally loving it this morning? Skiers and snowboarders up at Mount Bachelor. Yeah. Yeah, Look at our, yeah, a lot of them. Check out this time lapse. Look at the line this morning. This is a Wednesday, mind you. I think a lot of folks called in sick today. There's a lot of folks in that parking lot. Here was early this morning before first chair a lot of snow over the past couple of days. In fact, over the past three days, two feet of new snow for Mount Bachelor. So here was the time lapse for today. Just a few light snow showers. Other than that, it was overcast skies, a little bit breezy at times, but the sun really poked out by the afternoon, which really just a stellar day up across the mountain. Should be a nice next couple days too. So here's a look at your weather headlines. We do have just a few remaining snow showers across the area for tonight and heading into tomorrow. Tomorrow afternoon might see a few more too, especially across the Cascades. Overall, we're looking at much cooler temperatures moving forward for overnight lows and daytime highs. Daytime highs should be in the upper 40s for this date. We were only in the low 40s for today, so we're already seeing the cold air settle in. And over the next couple of days, we'll be a bit drier too. In addition to that cold air, we're going to see some calmer conditions. So for today, our temperature is really only peaked in the upper 30s at Roberts Field. It was 34 degrees in Bend, mid 40s out through the I-5 corridor, mid 40s down towards the south too. So you can see the whole entire state of Oregon did cool down by a few degrees for today. That cold air, it's settling in over the Pacific Northwest. It's being brought down from Canada and it'll linger in our area for quite some time. We're also seeing some scattered showers moving down from the north too. You can see that just out in the Pacific. It's all this rain shadow that you see. It's very unorganized, very scattered. As it makes landfall, it's either in the form of rain or snow. If you're above the snow levels, when you get to the west slopes of the Cascades and the Cascades themselves, East of the Cascades, though, were primarily dry in central Oregon, but we did see some snow showers roll through today. In terms of watches and warnings, nothing in place for the high desert, but we do still have a winter weather advisory in place to our southwest. That does expire at 10 o'clock tonight, and that's for Klamath County. So it is uh, just east of the Cascades. West of the Cascades, this expires early tomorrow morning, so a little bit later than the one through Klamath County. Looking at the bigger picture, so we have this big mass of cold air moving in over the Pacific Northwest that the scattered shower activity continues to rotate off the Pacific and into our regions. What we'll be seeing in terms of uh, scattered showers moving forward, but we'll also be seeing more snow showers as snow levels are pretty low. So you see east of the Cascades and across the Cascades all blue. That's all in the form of snow. So we see that for tonight. A couple remaining snow showers heading into early tomorrow morning, though. Conditions certainly calm down. It's partly cloudy skies to start the day with cloud cover west of the Cascades. 
By the time we get to the afternoon, we'll see a couple more snow showers uh, pop up through the afternoon around sunset. Here's that time tomorrow night. And heading into the overnight hours, we'll actually see our conditions calm down again. A very similar day to what we saw for today, but I think fewer showers on the way for tomorrow. We're cold tonight, colder than we were last night by a few degrees with a few remaining snow showers and mostly cloudy skies. Then tomorrow we see a few remaining snow showers. I think we catch more sunshine tomorrow though than what we saw for today. Low 30s down towards the south, 40s for Jefferson County for tomorrow. And that cold air, it lingers for the next several days. Again, average daytime high is 48. We don't get close to that over the next seven days. Saturday, I think we see more sunshine than we will on Sunday. That's been a look at your weather. Let's check out your snow report for tonight. Your local alert weather snow report brought to you by Les Schwab Tire Centers. Not a typo. It's 17 inches of new snow to report at Timberline Lodge. Just two for Mount Bachelor and Willamette Pass saw a foot of new snow. That's been a look at your weather. We're back after this. Primetime lineup tonight is brought to you by Powderhouse, your ski and snowboard headquarters. Oregon farm regulators may reduce the number of inspections they conduct for federal officials. Officials need to catch up on a backlog of state inspections. The U.S. Food and Drug Administration pays the Oregon Department of Agriculture $700,000 a year to make sure food manufacturers are following sanction standards and other regulations. A state audit found the program had a backlog of 2,800 facilities that were overdue for an inspection by at least three months. The agency is considering cutting down its yearly federal inspection, which would free up about 700 hours a year and reduce the agency's federal funding. Oregon's economy boasted another strong year of employment, population and wage growth in 2016. Economists say the positive trends should continue over the next two years and raise an additional $195 million in revenue for the state budget than was previously expected. Lawmakers applauded Oregon's economic performance, but warned budget cuts were still on the horizon. Despite the recent gains, there's still a $1.8 billion shortfall expected for the upcoming budget cycle. Homeowners applying for a work permit could be getting a big surprise because of a court decision last fall. The fee for a lot of record verification has increased by $400. The $925 fee is required by most local governments to prove property ownership. Simply paying property tax is not proof enough because there are situations where people can split tax lots without sharing ownership. The fee is a flat rate based on the average cost of processing fees. Deschutes County Community Development tells us potential home buyers can save a lot of trouble if they make sure their seller has a valid lot record before purchasing. Still to come, we're taking a look at the harrowing moments Harrison Ford's plane had landing unexpectedly in Anaheim. Your entertainment headlines are next. And later, NASA has discovered seven new planets that may harbor life. Stay with us. We have new videos showing the moment after Harrison Ford landed in the wrong place at a Southern California airport last week. The 74-year-old was coming in for a landing at John Wayne Airport when he accidentally landed on a taxiway and not on the runway he was instructed to land on. While he was landing, Ford flew over an American Airlines jet that was holding in position before taxiing out for departure. Now look at this. Air traffic control recordings captured Ford asking whether the American Airlines flight was supposed to be underneath him as he landed. The FAA is investigating the incident. A collection of Princess Diana's most iconic dresses will go on public display at Kensington Palace. The exhibition traces the evolution of her style 20 years after her death. It includes an extraordinary collection of garments, including the iconic velvet gown famously worn at the White House when the princess danced with John Travolta. It's a very iconic gown. Uh, the princess wore it on a state visit to the White House in 1985 when she very famously danced with John Travolta for almost half an hour twirling around the floor. Um, and um, it's the perfect meeting of uh, Hollywood and royalty. The exhibit opens on Friday. Plenty of movie news today, including an Oscars update and a certain Oscar winner's feelings about fatherhood. David Daniel is here with the Hollywood Minute. George Clooney says he's ready for fatherhood. The 55-year-old Oscar winner finally opened up about the twins he and wife Amal are expecting. 
Clooney told a French TV show they're both really happy and really excited and that his friends, whose kids are grown up, are teasing him about his late bloomer status. This is our chance to make a real difference. Movies like Rogue One, a Star Wars story, with Felicity Jones in the starring role, are making a difference in Hollywood. A new study reveals women were 29% of protagonists in the top 100 films at the U.S. box office last year. That may not sound great, but it's up 7% from the year before and a recent historical high. Thanks to films like Rogue One and fellow Oscar nominees Arrival and Hidden Figures, women also made up 37% of major characters, up 3% from 2015. And speaking of the Academy Awards, the voting is closed. 5 p.m. Tuesday was the deadline for casting Oscar ballots this year. Now the paper and online votes will be counted and calculated, and only two partners at PricewaterhouseCoopers will know the winners until they're revealed Sunday night at the 89th Academy Awards. In Hollywood, I'm David Daniel. All right, so do you think that Harrison Ford's pilot license should be taken away for that landing? Oh God, Yikes. I, I don't know. I, it, I can imagine that he's going to be in a lot of trouble no matter what happens. But, you know, if he loses his license, I mean, Chewbacca can still fly, right? <laughs> uh, Chewbacca. Good, good point. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, you know, it's happened before, so I kind of feel like since it has happened before, it's probably best to maybe take it away, you know? If you live in Southern California, make sure you know his flight plans and stay out of his way. <laughs> stay stay <laughs> out of the way. way. If you're going it, to Disneyland, it. yep, stay out of the way. Stay out of his way. Okay, that's all the time we have. We'll be back at the bottom of the hour.